Hi everyone, my name is Kevin and I started a new YouTube channel about me developing an open source 2D MMORPG. Let me introduce myself. I'm a software developer developing software for 25 years now. I'm 34 years old. My name is Kevin and I'm actually an ex Microsoft employee. For more information, feel free to check me out on LinkedIn. Feel free to add me there. And if you like the idea of getting to know how to develop a 2D MMORPG with, with a highly scalable backend, then please comment, like, and subscribe. Um, I'm trying to build a community around this project. So I have a Discord server, which which I really love. If you if you join it, um, you can check out my link and add it me add me there. And like I said, this is an open source project, so we will host it on GitHub. And the way we do that is that I create tags, which in in the screen are the yellow boxes for each video where where you can check what has changed from video one to two and everything. This video, I will explain um, my plans and what we will leverage. The plan is to go with this YouTube channel on a technical side, so I, I won't show any how I draw things and everything. We, we solely focus on the technical part. Um, but feel free to use every asset you we leverage here in your game jam project or whatever you like to use it for the the whole thing will be published with an mit license so you are free to use it um cost wise developing the project will cost you basically nothing even though i have pro licenses for unity and visual studio we won't use any professional features on them or pro features, so you can use the community version and the free versions of pretty much everything. The only downside is that Service Bus doesn't provide the emulator, so later down the line we might need to um, in introduce some costs to have a Service Bus available. But service bus itself, um, we will use way later in the development process. So at the start, we we don't need service bus at all. We want to use service bus for the session feature. Um, I I will explain very shortly what this feature is about, and later when I come to service bus, and when we will leverage it. But at the end, if, if you let the service bus run in Azure, it costs you $10 per month. But if you delete the service bus after you have done your developing, then Azure has a pay-as-you-go uh, payment model. So you, you only pay what, what you use. So if you do one hour of development and you delete it afterward, it's just p some cents per hour you will use it. So I highly recommend you do that so it's not too expensive. The game will be in 2D and this is this is my art that you see on the screen and how the game at the end will look like. I'm by no means a, an artist, I'm a software developer, but I think it's in 2D I can provide easier quality than in 3D when it comes to walking around with boxes and everything. This video or, or this, this channel is about um, how do you develop a game like that with the focus on technology. And because this is a very advanced topic, um, I need to to start at a at an advanced level. So if, if you have never done any C Sharp or Unity development before, you might find it hard to follow along with the videos. But for that, we have the Discord server and the comment section in YouTube. Feel free to leverage them and ask me any questions that you have. I try to answer them as best as I can. So 
basically it's a requirement to have some basic understanding of Unity and C Sharp because if I have to explain everything in there, for example, what is a loop or what is the difference between a float or an int, then we 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 will have thousands of videos till we at the end will start developing something something great and but if you do have uh, a little bit of knowledge you, you don't need to be able to to develop the uh, a full-fledged game at the end just some basic knowledge is enough to to get along and we will i will explain everything as best as i can this whole channel will be have a tactical focus and we will leverage the technologies you see here on screen, which is for the first thing, the Unity game engine. We will leverage the Unity game engine because it's also C sharp and easier to use than than other game engine for C sharp developers like myself. It gives us also the opportunity to share code between Unity, our client, and the server code because it's it's both C sharp. For the server side, we use Kubernetes as an orchestrator and we have a microservice architecture. So Kubernetes is the go-to standard to, to have a microservice backend architecture with Docker containers and we will le definitely leverage that so that you learn something which you can take outside uh, and apply to to your job and everything. On the other side, there are other server orchestrator like for example, Service Fabric, but Service Fabric is a, a more niche product and basically Kubernetes is the standard product to have good server orchestration. So we will definitely use that. Redis is a in-memory database. We use it as service-to-service -service communication as a fast cache and it's really really fast and it's but it's in memory we won't leverage a feature where redis is writing something on disk or have some kind of persistence if we want to use persistence then we will leverage cosmos db for that cosmos db is a no sql database um, which in our case fits better than an sql database an sql database is really good at aggregating data but we barely never aggregate data. We won't read data solely by their ID. For example, if we get a, want to get a player position and you have the player ID, Cosmos DB is really fast at reading those data because it's a single point read. For service bus, we will definitely use it when we want to have a more persistence or more reliable queue. And in our case, we want to leverage the session feature. The session feature gives us the, the ability to distribute the workload in our backend. Let's say we have an enemy worker service. So this service can control one or more enemies, basically NPCs that are walking around or, or enemies that you can attack. If, if this worker, it would be great to have the messages distributed for this one enemy only to that one worker and, and not the other 20 workers or something that are running and are able to control enemies. The session feature of Service Bus exactly does that. So each message can get a, a session ID and for example the enemy ID and if one worker is bound to that session he gets every message that is with that session ID. It, it goes even beyond that. Let's say this worker crashes or moves around within our, our nodes or our cluster, then service buff, the session feature will detect that this, this enemy isn't controlled anymore and will distribute the load to one of the available servers and service bus is the only message broker currently that has this feature fully fledged out of the box it's it's really convenient to use you will see it when we will leverage it it's way easier to use it as as that instead of writing it our own L leave a comment if if you're if you want to go fully open source then we can implement this feature with redis which is a lot of to implement but we, we could definitely do it.
And for networking between client and server, we will solely use the UDP protocol. The UDP protocol has a lot of issues, which I will deeply explain when when we implement our our first service with the UDP library. But there are libraries out there which which helps you with that. For example, you see the first link is Revenant X with the light netlib, which is a really good UDP library which gives you reliability in order and everything. But for my case, I will use my own library, which you can also see the GitHub link, which I don't recommend you to use because it's not battle proof. I'm more used to my own library and then when we want to tweak things here and there, it's way easier for me to do in my own library than in to do it in an open source project but feel free to use uh, another library if you want to. So Unity Game Engine, um, it's a full featured game engine. You can f uh, write games completely solely within Unity. We will leverage in Unity only the rendering engine, input management and physics engine. We don't use Unity as a whole game development platform. The reason for that is that we want to be able to run our client without Unity. That, that's a constraint we, we give ourselves, which enables us to do something like load testing pretty easy. Let's say our client works without Unity and we have a small console application which logs into the server and moves around on the map a little bit. And we can start in the cloud this console application thousands of times and test if our server really is scalable and really works with thousands of thousands of players or, or if we find issues if for example 10,000 players are on one map at one location those issues are really hard to to test yourself when when your client only runs in unity because you have to start unity a thousand times which is way more less cost efficient and way more heavy on load for your backend machines. That's why we split Unity to only use rendering input and physics engine and but our client is solely written as a class library which Unity will leverage later and they will communicate with each other. This also enables us to have unit tests and, and more on client side easier than with Unity. And it's always easier when something is decoupled to couple it again than when something is coupled tightly to decouple it. And we go with the with the decision that is more easy to reverse. Kubernetes, also known as Q8S, if you want to search for it in Google, is an open source system for automating deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. And that's exactly what we will use it for. At the end, our backend will have services in form of Docker containers, and we want to start some Docker containers multiple times, some, some less, and Kubernetes also takes care of load balancing and networking within the cluster. We, we will see it and I will show it very deeply when we start using Kubernetes. Redis, like I said, is an in-memory database, um, cache and message broker, and we will use it most likely as a message broker and maybe as a cache here and there. It has a lot of features like sorted hash lists and everything. We need it as a message broker because it's the fastest message broker I could find to get messages from A to B. Cosmos DB is our uh, data sync, if you want to call it that way, where our persistent data goes into login information from our client and, and everything. Where's the current client and on which map and which location when he logs out and everything like that will be saved in Cosmos DB. Service bus, like I said before, will be we will leverage it most likely for the sessions feature. But we will we will have to check if I might change the decision on the go because um, I want to have the development process for you as cheap as possible. We will use a custom UDP library. There are there are reasons we want to do that, and when we start our first service, which is um, the next next video, then we will leverage the UDP library to to write our first service. And in in this video, I will deeply explain why UDP and why, for example, not TCP or REST. But we won't leverage 
any other communication layer from client to server than UDP. We could, for example, mix REST in. Let's say we want to write a login, which creates a token for the client to, to authenticate against the UDP service. We could do that in REST. And there, there are also good, good arguments to do that in REST because you have HTTPS, which already encrypts and makes sure that you don't leak passwords when, when you send them over the net because you have encryption between client and server and everything. And it's super easy to use with ASP.NET, but we, we won't use that because I want to keep everything as simple as possible. And the as simple as possible means we have one communication layer between client and server and mixing those layer, which make the project more complicated than it needs to be. So uh, you want to prepare your machine to follow along with the videos, then I highly recommend you install those things on the screen. For example, the Unity engine. We will use the latest LTS version for Unity. LTS means long time support, uh, long term support, sorry. We will use that because it's, it's a most likely stable build with the latest feature. For Visual Studio, we will use Visual Studio 2019. Feel free to use the Community Edition. I have the Professional Edition, but you don't need to have it. Next, I linked a, a blog post where how to install Docker Desktop with Kubernetes. Um, just follow along with the blog post and you have the Docker Desktop with Kubernetes support. And since we will leverage Kubernetes, you need to have the Kubernetes support. There are different ways to run Kubernetes on your machine, but that's the way which I picked for, for this development for myself. Cosmos DB emulator lets you run the Cosmos DB as an emulator on your machine, so you don't have to host your Cosmos DB in the cloud for development. It's, it's for free. Um, this way and you, we don't introduce any cost. Azure Storage Emulator um, is the same with Cosmos DB for Azure Storage. I don't know if I will leverage it, but I have it installed locally and do not have any, any issues when, when I will leverage it. It's good to have it and it doesn't hurt your system. Last but not least, we have Redis. Option two is basically to download Redis and run it as a Windows service inside of Windows, which I won't do. Because when I want to use Redis, I will host it in the Kubernetes cluster. And I will show you how to do that when we use um, Kubernetes and service-to-service -service communication the first time. It's good to have the, your communication layer as close as possible to your services, which is in the same cluster. As you can't get closer than that because it's faster that way. You don't, don't need to communicate outside your virtual network and everything. I'm really happy and pumped to 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 provide this information by and I'm really happy that you're here and I hope we will have a great time together and develop a, a 2D MMO RPG with with Azure and Kubernetes have a good day bye